Hi there everybody. We're looking at gametogenesis today. So we're looking at the creation. So genesis means creation of the gametes, the sex cells. And we're looking at the uh, process of gametogenesis in humans. So first of all, we'll look at how sperm are created. So we start off with a diploid cell. Uh, this is in the testes. And the first thing that happens is that diploid cell will divide by mitosis. And so we're going to end up with lots of diploid cells, which we call uh, sp uh, spermatogonium. All of these spermatogonium will, again, divide by mitosis and they will grow. So we end up with cells which we call primary spermatocytes. So again, if you think you know, all of these are dividing by mitosis, uh, we end up with uh, millions of these primary spermatocytes in the testes. Once we've gone through that stage of mitosis, those primary spermatocytes then divide by meiosis. So the blue arrows represent meiosis. So this is meiosis 1, ending up with two daughter cells, which are haploid. And these are the secondary spermatocytes. These then need to go through the second meiotic division. And so we end up after meiosis 2 with our four daughter cells. And those are called spermatids. There are no more divisions that take place. All that happens now is that those spermatids need to just mature a little bit. Um, and once they're mature, they uh, look like what we would think of as sperm. And we actually call them then sperm or spermatozoa. So that's the process. It's a continuous process. It's happening all the time. Um, as soon as males reach puberty, that is, it starts to happen and it will happen continuously. OK, so with egg cells, uh, which is oogenesis, it's a little bit uh, different, a little bit more complex. But we start off in the same way with our diploid cell dividing by mitosis and we end up with oogonia. So these oogonia, um, we don't have as many of them produced as we do when uh, sperm cells are made. This is taking place in the ovaries, but whereas in the sperm, this process would take place once puberty has started, um, in females, this process begins before the female has even been born. So this process here happens in the embryo itself. Those oogonia then divide again by mitosis, and we end up with our primary oocytes. Again, still in the embryo. Now, these primary oocytes begin to divide by meiosis. What we can see here, though, is that this line here shows us that meiosis has not completed. It stops. So the primary oocyte begins its first meiotic division, but it only gets to prophase 1. So it's st therefore still a diploid cell, because it's only in prophase 1 in meiosis, and then it stops. And it stays like this all the way from um, before. So this is all before the baby's been born. So this is all happening in the embryo and the fetus. And it will stay paused here until the female gets to puberty. When the female gets to puberty, this primary oocyte, which is paused at prophase 1 of meiosis, will complete meiosis 1 and it will also start meiosis 2, and we call it then a secondary oocyte. So this cell here is now at um, the metaphase 2 stage of meiosis. So meiosis 1 happens, meiosis 2 begins, but it doesn't complete. We obviously have to have another cell which is produced, but this cell, which we call the polar body, has been created unequally. So it's much smaller. It doesn't have all the material that it needs. And this polar body will just disintegrate and then take no further part. So we only end up here with one cell at metaphase 2 of meiosis 2, which we call our secondary oocyte. And this is where it stops. So the female, once you reach puberty, will have lots of these secondary oocytes in her ovaries, but nothing else will happen 
um, until one of those secondary oocytes is released from the ovary. So each month, one secondary oocyte is released from the ovary into the oviduct, and that process causes um, the secondary oocyte to then develop. Sorry, I'm just going to go back a little bit. I didn't quite say that right. So we've got our secondary oocyte. It will get one of those will be released each month from the ovary into the oviduct. It's still at meiosis uh, two, so it's still part way through meiosis two. Meiosis two will only be completed if that secondary oocyte is fertilised by a sperm. The process of fertilisation triggers the completion of meiosis two. And at the end of meiosis two, we therefore have our final haploid cell, which we call an ovum. So just to reiterate, this cell here, this secondary oocyte, is paused at metaphase two of meiosis two. Once it's released during ovulation, it then stays there, and only if it's fertilised by a sperm will it continue meiosis two, and then we get our final cell, which we call our ovum. Obviously, this ovum here, so this is haploid, but because fertilisation has happened, it won't stay haploid for very long. As soon as those chromosomes from the sperm join the chromosomes from the ovum, this ovum will then become a diploid zygote. Final thing to mention is that when the rest of meiosis II is triggered, we will also then get a polar body being formed, which then does not develop and takes no further part. Okay, that's it. Thank you.